Welcome back to Bike World. Welcome to another episode of Dream Rise. And welcome, as promised, to the sequel to 70s two-stroke awesomeness. We've got a supercharger. Kawasaki have redone it with the new H2. This particular bike is the H2 Carbon, which is just crazy from 228 brake horsepower. And on a supercharged, it's just absolutely obscene. Top speed of 211 miles an hour. And they do also do another version of this, which is, uh, you've ridden, haven't you? The H2R, which is 300 and... It's, it's a claimed 320 horsepower. Yeah. yeah. But it, I mean, it's not quite that when you measure it on a wheel, but right. oh, I've done a lot of silly things with the R. I'm really excited to try it on the road now. Yeah, and the beauty about this particular one is the carbon version, which is mm. the perfect blend between the H2 and the H2R. People wanted one to look like the H2R, but obviously you can't ride it on the road. They did the perfect blend, which is this carbon version, which just looks absolutely stunning and very, very similar to the H2R, apart from the wings. Yeah, but let's go for the specs of 200 and it's a two no 228 horsepower 228 this particular horsepower. bike uh, not the lightest of all no, bikes not are they two, the, yeah 238 kilos in weight which is a heavy bike and it's, it's a phenomenal looking thing yeah a lot of people sort of say they're ugly but it yeah. And two, 211, 211 miles an hour. We're not so doing like, that today. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, what was the top speed you actually did on the H2R? Uh, on an R, I did 209 at Qatar. And then wow. I'm trying to remember, we just... I we, can't imagine what that must feel like. Terrifying, because there's yeah. a corner coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I have a feeling I didn't make the corner. Throw the parachute like. out <laughs> as you're coming into it. Yeah, looks-wise, I just think they look aggressive. It's like something out of Mad Max film. I do know, obviously, since... The Top Gun film is Maverick's choice to actually ride the H2, and uh, since you, that film, you know been Maverick's going, not a real guy, don't you? Yeah, I know. You he know is. In my, in my head, he's a real guy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he the the sales have just gone crazy. I mean, we had three in, and since the film's been out, we sold them all. No way. Yeah. That's mad. The power well, of movies. Power of movies. It's not a real cost-effective way to advertise them, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Today is going to be my first chance to ride a proper supercharged H2 on the road and it's going to be the carbon one. I'm going to do my best to keep away from the stone chips. But yeah, I'm really excited to try this. But as dream rides go, it's got a supercharger. Of course. is Kawasaki's phenomenal H2, which is supposed to be the Karma sibling to the H2R, <laughs> but absolutely is not. Oh my God. Between the absolute Brutal power delivery, the constant chirping and chirping of the supercharger, and a, a big, brutish, heavy bike. This is one of the most intense, one of the most awe inspiring, one of the most, in all honesty, one of the most daunting riding experiences you could ever expect on a motorcycle. If you want to see more videos riding nonsense like this, they'll appear above my head as if by magic. They're not here now, so I just look weird, but they'll be there, they'll be there. Yeah, check them out. It's not often you get an opportunity to go full send on these bikes, so it's, it's pretty cool. Also, please don't forget, hit the subscribe button below and ring the little ding dong bell looking thing, uh, and you'll get a reminder when any of our new videos come out. Your support is much appreciated. Cheers. I've said it before and I'll say it again. <laughs> Thank you, Kawasaki, for making this bike. I have no idea why you did, but I'm glad that you did. It is phenomenal. In theory, this is the calm, sensible sibling of the H2R, the 320 horsepower killer death machine thing. What's more, this is the road one. So it's passed Euro something something emissions test. It's been homologated for road use. And what that means is somebody outside of Kawasaki, outside of the engineering team that built it, somebody has gone in, checked it over and gone, yep, that's fine, sell that to the public. <laughs> <laughs> they can ride it on the road if they like.
And I, f I still find that hard to believe because this thing is flat out ridiculous. And ignore the numbers, they don't make up what this bike is. This bike is the most insane thing you can buy off the shelf to ride on the road. Phenomenal. Before I get into massive detail about this bike, talking on the road legal side of things, so not only is this homologated and good for road use, who's going to insure it? We actually have an insurance partner in BMOTO. That's their bag. BMOTO are all about bespoke insurance policies, insurance policies for bikes that are laid up, bikes that are in transit. They'll insure a race van for you. They'll insure motocross bikes. If you've got a motorcycle that's a little bit out of the ordinary, they're the ones to speak to because long before BMOTO ever came on board with Bike World, genuinely that's who I insure my bikes with because I've got lots of different bikes and they're always changing so phone up and get a change midterm swap one bike in for another bike and there's no charge for doing that their multi-bike policy is really good value if you had a H2 and you wanted to insure it give our mates at BMOTO a shout certain they'll be able to help you out and be very competitive on price 220 whatever it was horsepower we'll let leave James do the numbers 230 something kilos it's a heavy bike it's not a lightweight bike I left the building this morning it was damp coldish I was quite tired, you know that half asleep, tired, achy first ride. Honestly, I wanted to be anywhere other than on this thing. It was horrible. The levers, it's a bit of a Kawasaki thing, but the levers are angled quite a long way upwards and there's not much clearance to tip them further down. So you've got this low bars, kicked up levers. So you're sort of in this awkward riding position. You're then trying to steer it around traffic and it's heavy and paddling it in and out of the garage, it's heavy. Wasn't a lot in it for me this morning. I was, I was not, not a big fan of the H2 after the first half hour. At lowest RPM, it's quite abrupt on and off the throttle. It's punchy, it's shunty, it, you know, it's hard work around town. Clutch is light, ABS, that stuff's all good, but it's hard work around town. And I was kind of like, I'm over this already and I haven't gone anywhere on it. Fast forward a couple more hours and I'm sure Al's got a clip he's gonna play in a minute, but you've just got me giggling into my head, <laughs> laughing at everything it does. And just, you can't see my eyes, but absolutely wide-eyed with <laughs> fear, excitement, love, hatred, terror, all of the above. Just what an intense riding experience. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this thing is the single most intense riding experience I've ever had on the road. And I, I include the Desma Sedici in that. This is another level again. Two to four, it's kind of a bit jerky and not very happy. Get to 4,000 RPM and it comes on so strongly, so abruptly. You're literally, you need your toe on the back brake or you're constantly just bashing into the electronics that are trying to keep the front wheel down. It just wheelie spins, wheelie skip, wheelie spin. Give it another gear, do it in third, give it another gear, do it in fourth, give it another gear, do it in fifth. Like, it just never ends. So you're coming out of corners and it's fighting you, it's wheeling you, it's wrestling the bars from your hand. It's, it's an absolute animal of the bike. It is so intense. On top of that, when you shut the gas, you get this, this like chirrup from the supercharger, which then makes you want to do it all over again. But the engine braking is quite aggressive too. So you shut the gas and it's and then you open the throttle and it's So you're just constantly in this cycle of, either having to brake way too hard or accelerate way too hard. And it just goes on and on and on. We rode it in some stupid places as well, which didn't help. We went to some crisp spec tight, twisty, bumpy back roads where it was hopping and bouncing and wheeling and jumping. And honestly, I just it was like having all of your senses smashed with a cricket bat for three hours I was on it. I, I'm actually knackered. It has actually worn me out today. I got back here and I could barely get my leg off the back of it. This is the first time I've ridden one of these, you know, not just the H2SX, you know, the road going version, but one of these full blown H2s on the road. On the track, they're a full on experience. They are obscene. On the road, it's daft. It's beyond daft. It is hands down the most insane bike you will ever open a throttle on. And for that, good job, Kawasaki. You lot are idiots, I love it.